Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about sound absorbing materials. There's a lot of confusion out there what constitutes a sound absorbing material. So we need to uh, look at the definition and see if we can get a, a better understanding of things as it goes. Sound absorption is a process where acoustical energy, airborne energy is converted to heat through a process uh, it's complicated, but let's just keep it simple for the sake of this discussion. And we're changing airborne acoustical energy, sound energy, if you will, into heat. So two two things going on, uh, two, two variables and one process. So we're converting sound energy uh, into nothing, basically, through through absorption and and converting it to heat. So we're losing sound energy. We're actually managing it by losing it. And that's a debate we could have in a whole nother video and a whole nother session. Um, we don't feel it's necessary to uh, absorb all that energy in order to manage it correctly, that there, that there are uh, other ways to do it. But we could talk about that uh, in another video. There's two basic kinds of sound absorption processes that go on. There's air movement or molecular velocity, if you will, which most of your uh, foams, your open-celled acoustic foams and your building insulations, your limp mass absorbers use that principle. It requires air movement moving through the particular sound absorbing material. And through that movement, through the material, you get sound absorption. You get the heat process and then you get loss of amplitude. So you slow the reflection down, sometimes too much. Open-celled foams, limp mass uh, products are really good at that. Um, anything that air moves through, for this process to work, and thus it usually only pertains to middle and high frequencies, you need molecular velocity or air movement. What's the other one? It's the pressure. When you're dealing with low frequency waves, you're really not dealing with air movement. You're dealing with air pressure. Completely different. Pressure and air movement are one in the same, but basically different. You have air movement with pressure, but pressure is something that must be dealt with differently because it's just too much, too overwhelming, and, and too great of, of a, a a mass, so to speak, to work with, and that's why acoustical foams and lip max products and, and things like that won't work in the 30, 40, 50 cycle range. It simply won't because it just overpowers the sound absorption uh, technology. To deal with pressure, to deal with low frequency waves and, and long wavelengths, you need pressure reactive devices. Hemolts resonators, diaphragmatic absorbers, these are just two that uh, work really well. Membrane absorbers uh, would be another one. All with various different degrees of success, all with different rates and levels of performance. So you first have to assess your need and apply the correct technology for that particular need. Um, so remember, it's a combination. Sound absorption is a process where Airborne acoustical energy, or if you will, vibrational energy uh, through solids, is changed to heat, and thus a reduction in the amplitude or the signal occurs. But there's a trade off. We actually lose energy when we change it to heat. We don't destroy it, but we lose it. And man losing energy in order to manage it is, is very problematic. You have to. Uh, be very careful about that. You have to choose the sound absorbing material that fits either the air movement or the air pressure and make sure you have the correct rates and levels to deal with. Thank you.